welcome guys in last video we have seen the notation used in this diagram so now we will move for the derivation of the stress equation in case of curved beams okay so original length of fiber which we have considered is Rn plus y into theta all right so this dy fiber and this length is Rn plus y so radius into theta that is angle we will know the length of the fiber similarly this layer this layer after application of mb is shortened by so it is shortened by by an amount an amount okay now how much amount it is shortened so see this much amount so this much amount it is shortened so i want to find I want to find the length of this fiber. I know, I know this DC, the DC, original DC, after applying the bending moment, after applying the bending moment, change to GF. Okay. And it rotate and it rotated angle D theta. Now I know this angle. I know this length. It is Y. I can find this layer, right? The length of this layer. So what will be the length of this layer? It will be this y distance that is radius into angle so it will be y into d theta now what is this actually we have seen in some change in length okay this is original length og and this is change in length so this is original length and this is change in length so you know the one formula for strain that is change in length by original actually it is linear strain linear strain is change in length by original length so strain in this fiber strain in fiber is equal to change in length or change in length that is y d theta upon r n plus y upon into theta so it is so strain in fiber is equal to change in length upon original length that is y d theta upon r n plus y theta. Now I am keeping this, I am giving it equation number 1, I am keeping it as it is. Now we will move, again we will move to the strain. If you remember in assumption of curve beam, we have seen one assumption, it obeys Hooke's law. So what Hooke's law says? Okay, according to Hooke's law, modulus of velocity E is equal to stress upon strain. Okay, or you can say stress is directly proportional to strain and E that is proportionality constant. Okay, now I can say that stress is equal to E that is modulus of velocity into strain. Okay, so E into strain. Okay, so now with I know the strain, strain is nothing but here. So I'm just putting stress is equal to E into Y into D theta divided by Rn plus Y into theta. Okay, so this I'm giving equation number 2. Okay, now what is stress? Stress is nothing but resistive force by cross section area. Now, in this case, we can see P amount of load is acting. Okay. Now, for this fiber, it will be delta P. So, small amount of force that is delta P. By cross section area, we know the cross section area of this fiber that is delta A. So, stress is resistive force upon cross section area. Now, can I say this? This resistive force is equal to stress in into delta e i know i know the stress that is nothing but stress formula from equation 2 from equation 2 it will be e y d theta upon 
आर एन प्लस वाई थीटा डेल्टा ए फ्रॉम इक्वेशन टू सो दिस दिस इज फ्रॉम हर राइट सो आई एम गिविंग इट इक्वेशन नंबर थ्री ओके नाउ वी आर अप्लाइंग द कंडीशन ऑफ इक्विलिब्रियम सो अप्लाइंग कंडीशन ऑफ इक्विलिब्रियम ओके दैट इज वी नो दिस कंडीशन ओके मैकेनिक्स इन सॉ वी हैव यूज दिस समीशन ऑफ फोर्स ओवर होल क्रॉसेशन इज जीरो आई एम जस्ट राइटिंग दैट इज समीशन 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 ऑफ forces all forces you can say over whole cross section whole cross section is zero so summation of delta p is equal to zero we know the delta p we will put the delta p over here e y d theta by r m plus y into theta into delta Okay. Now in this equation, again we having e d theta and theta as a constant. So I am removing them out of integration. So it will become e d theta by theta integration of y r n plus y d a is equal to zero. Now see, we having two parts over here. First part is this one. Second part is this one. Okay, and the multiplication of these two parts is zero. Means definitely one part among this is zero. Now see, e is a constant. D theta is angle, and theta is angle. So this part can't be zero. E having something value. D theta also having something value, and theta also having something value. But E d theta by theta cannot be zero. Means what does means integration of y upon r n plus y d e is equal to zero. And this is equation number four. Now let us consider moment about neutral axis. Okay, so moment. About neutral axis. Now see, when this moment M B is applied, M B is applied. This P is causing compression in the fiber which are which are above this neutral axis, and the fibers which are below the neutral axis they are in tension. Now we have to consider the moment about this. Fiber of thickness dy. Now mo moment at here will be force into distance. So moment m b is equal to force into distance. Distance is distance of that fiber from neutral axis. That is y into area of that fiber. That is delta area. Okay. Actually, it will be d m b is equal to y into d a. Now I am taking integration from both side. Okay. So it is integration y d a. Now we know the value of delta a from equation three. Okay, it is e y d theta upon r n plus y theta delta a from equation three. From equation three. Now we know that. This e d theta and theta is nothing but constants. So I am removing them out of the integration. So e d theta by theta out, remaining term is y square upon r n plus y delta a. Now I am just dividing this term into two parts. Now let's see. It's equal to e d theta upon theta. Integration y minus y r n divided by r n plus y 
delta A. Now how this came? Okay, just consider just consider this term y minus y r n upon r n plus y. Okay, I'm making cross multiplication is divided by one cross multiplication. So it will be y into r n plus y square minus y r n divided by r n plus y. So this term and this term are cancelled remaining is y square r n plus y. So this term is nothing but y1 rn plus y that is this term so these both terms are same i'm just making this in a two part okay now you know that from equation four that is this term is nothing but zero so we can say that remaining term that is mb is equal to e d theta upon theta integration y d a but integration of YDA represent moment of area and it can be replaced it can be replaced by area into eccentricity so we have seen the eccentricity is nothing but difference or the distance between these two axes okay so area is nothing but cross section area okay so now I'm replacing this YDA that is nothing but moment of area by A into A. This is also moment of area. This is also moment of area. Yes, I'm writing this sentence. But some integration YDA represents YDA represents moment of area area and can be can be replaced by replaced by area into eccentricity so mb becomes e d theta upon theta into area into eccentricity now i'm just taking this area area and eccentricity over here okay so mb upon area into eccentricity is equal to e d theta upon theta okay so now this is equation number five if you remember the equation number one then from equation number one equation number one that is sigma is equal to e y t theta upon r n plus y theta now I'm taking, I'm just keeping E D theta and theta right hand side and other term at left hand side. Okay, E D theta by theta right hand side. So it will be like sigma into R n plus y divided by y is equal to E D theta upon theta. So this is sixth term. Okay, actually this is equation number two. So this is sixth term. Okay now from equation from equation equation fifth and sixth from equation fifth and sixth we can say sigma rn plus y upon y is equal to mb upon area into eccentric city so so we can say sigma is equal to mb into y divided by rn into y area into eccentricity so this is the equation and this is applicable fiber fibers above neutral axis okay so this is applicable when this fiber which we have selected the fiber of length of uh, thickness dy is it is above the neutral axis when it is below the neutral axis it becomes sigma mb into y upon this plus rn minus y area into eccentricity okay 
So this is when when fibers are below the neutral axis. Now at outer fiber at outer fiber at this fiber what will be the y value so it will be equal to ho at outer fiber the y value will be ho before that what will be the maximum bending value okay if you consider the maximum bending value this is stress distribution curve it is zero at neutral axis and it is increasing towards the outer fiber and at outer fiber it is maximum similarly it is uh, decreasing or it is uh, increasing towards inner fiber and inner fiber again it is maximum okay so i can say that at outer fiber at outer fiber y is equal to at zero right this is y so at outer fiber this y value will become at zero okay so sigma p maximum at outer fiber is equal to just replace this y with h0 so it is mb h0 now replace this y with h0 then it will be rn plus h0 it is nothing but ro so it will be ro a into e okay and so called as sigma p outer fiber Similarly, sigma p maximum at inner fiber, inner fiber will be m b h i upon r i a e is equal to sigma b. So, these two important formulas we are going to use for. designing of curved beams okay